But what I want you to do now is go ahead once again and right click on the screen here, go to import, go to uh, import again. You can't see it on my screen, but it's there. Then choose existing from workspace, and you select it, select archive file, go browse, and the one I want you to bring in now is JSP scripting. That's what we really want to look at, okay? Okay? I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So make sure, you've, make sure you've clicked on the JSP scripting. Did it come up in the select all? You saw that? I just hit finish and it should come up. Did it come up? Do you mean walk through it again? We're going to fix that. So you see that X? See that error right there? Let's open that up. It's got some extraneous code. We're going to get rid of it. And there's a Java resources that's got an error on it. There's an SRC got an error on it. There's a, a core server that's got an error on it. You see that three params Java? Got an error? Just for now, we're just going to delete that that file. Yep. And so the errors will go away. That was that's a, that's what was causing the errors. You'll see still see a little X here uh, on JS scripting. Just ignore it. All right, the errors are gone. All right, and now what I want you to do is open up the web content folder, and in the web content folder, you're going to see all your JSP pages, and we're going to open up one and look at them. Okay, I'm going to open up the sample JSP page. Mm -hmm. And now what you're going to see, Porter, is something very similar to what we did when we studied PHP. What you're seeing here is something that's just very similar to what we did when we worked with JSP pages. Um, and you see uh, it's an HTML page. So you've got an HTML header, and you've got a body, and you've got a center, and you've got an H1 tag, and you've got an H2 tag. And suddenly you've got this little uh, uh, percent sign here. You see that? Whenever you close this percent signs, this actually means that you're putting in JSP. In PHP, we'd put in uh, inline tags like this, and we'd go what uh, bracket PHP equals question mark p bracket. You know, so same thing we used to do with PHP program. You do the same thing with JSP. It's almost identical. So what's going to happen is you're just writing HTML, and in that HTML, you're substituting whatever is going to be pulled in from the uh, Java side. So right here in this command right here, we're just going to create a random number. So I'm going to see num1 is random. Then we're going to do a double. We're going to do another uh, random number here. And then we're going to do another random number here. You see that? So we're just basically going to pull in a bunch of random numbers. We're going to run this. But before we run this, what do we have to do? We have to do our little server trick. So now we're going to right click on our server. We're going to go to um, add remove. I'm going to add that. And I'll just remove the other one. What the heck? So I should have JSP scripting right over here on this configured side. You see that? Just hit finish. And now I'm, I'm, I'm going to click on the sample uh, JSP now, and I'm just going to try to run that. So let's hit the Run button. And I just hit No. And it, what it's asking me now is go ahead and click on the local host, the one I'm going to be running, Tomcat Server, and I hit Finish. It's going to restart the server for me automatically because it knows I didn't restart it when I should have. And that's all my random numbers. Ta-da! Welcome to uh, JSP. Now you would bet I'd be doing a lot of more lecturing about a JSP if, if I had not taught you PHP first. Because what I want you to do is put your PHP cap back on. So essentially, you're kind of doing very much with JSP, in this case, what you did with your PHP. It's just, just deployed differently on a Tomcat server, and it's actually in a different place to actually deploy it, and that's in a web content folder. You see that? Let's take a look at another one, all right? And one thing I want to draw your attention to now is this cascading style sheet. Did you see jsp.styles.css? Go to your web content folder. There's a jsp-styles.css. Click on that and open that up, and basically all that is is a style sheet. Now, next week in uh, Lively FBOG in our, in our users group, we're going to be talking about Business Catalyst. And in Business Catalyst, you, you're doing the same thing in a sense. You're pretty much doing um, CHS, CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. And then with the Business Catalyst modules. Here, you're doing CSS, um, HTML, and JSP. See, see, there's a difference here. But it's almost the same type of ideas, the same models. So there you have it. Now what I'm going to do is just run one more, and I think we've had our introduction, and then we're going to go to the big boy example, all right? Let's go to another one. Let's choose a, a day wish. You see day, day wish? Here's my day wish, and I'm going to, uh, you see my cascading style sheet, sheet right there? And here's my uh, random numbers in my body. And it's like, have a nice day. A little bit of JSP, excuse me. And this is, once again, it's just basically JSP is what? A JSP page is basically Java running inside of an HTML page. Just think of it like that and you won't get lost. Run this, hit no. 
I hit localhost, hit Tomcat, hit finish, and it should run. Have a nice day. Ta-da! Thank you very much. There you go. Did you? <laughs> really? Let's try it. Did you? Let me run it again. Maybe it's random. You got... Oh, I have a lousy day. Oh, that's terrible. Let's go back to a nice day. <laughs> Just run it again. Have, I got... Oh, I got to have a nice day. Good. Well, there you go. I got to have a nice day. You got to have a lousy day. So... It's doing it randomly, so it's a random me selecting. So you may have hit it three or four times before it changes for you. Okay, that's great. And you see what's happening there is um, one of these is nice and one of these is lousy. You see the code? And that's being randomly selected. And so when you get the right random selection, it, it sends you to one or the other. I really feel that like you need to hit servlets and JSP before you go deeper. You may have data on one side. And you actually want to change it into XML that can be consumed by a client application like Flex or Flash or even just a client HTML. And so people use JSP basically to create an XML to be consumed. And But you've got to have some experience with JSP servlets so you don't get lost. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but when you see JSP, you won't be afraid of it. I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, what you're seeing is kind of an evolution of technology here. When Java came out, basically the whole idea it would be kind of a front-end system. But what happened is Java turned out to be more and more of the back-end system making less and less of the interface for you. So you're going to build your interface in something else like Adobe Flash or Flex, but you're going to use Java to bring your back-end systems in. And the natural uh, evolution to that technology is first to look at serverless and JSP. Then we'll immediately next time s switch over back to Spring and Hibernate. And we talk about JSP and I show you a JSP example, you won't be afraid. We are going to consume some HTTP services, but what you're going to want to do with your system is use a Spring Flex, for example, and use a Blaze DS, which is a remoting system, which gives you bit transfer 10 times faster than HTTP service. But you need to be familiar with those, and that's why we're covering the uh, JSP today. Okay, so that's JSP introduction. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to bring in that beautiful website that I gave you.